Hey, what's up, y'all? All right. I'm going to make this a quick one today. At least I hope that's what I'm going to try to do. Coming to you here from the podcast studio. And let me just say before we get this one going, I did put up a new pro- a new podcast this week. A little over two hours of answering your questions as well as took some call-in questions. We're getting back to that. Podcast is back up, fired up again. Hopefully to get one out every single week. So go check that out. Lawns Across America. I'll link it up in the eye or just search Lawns Across America on YouTube and check out the podcast. Lots of q and I think it'll be helpful to you. And if you want to call in with a question for the podcast, it's 833-LCN-TIPS, 833-LCN-TIPS. So check that out. I think you guys will really like it. Okay. Today, against my better judgment, I'm going to make a video on lawn diseases that I'm seeing. And this is mostly because I'm seeing a really bad outbreak this year. And so I want to kind of go through some of the thinking process of lawn diseases. Now, the thing I want to talk about before I get into that is that not everything you see is a lawn disease, but everything can look like a lawn disease, okay? So for example, many of you, and I'm mainly talking to cool season turf right now, but I am going to have some content on disease I'm seeing in St. Augustine grass and other warm season turf here coming up. But I want to say that one of the things that most of you guys with cool season turf are seeing right now is heat stress, and heat stress can manifest and look like a disease. On top of that, sometimes you'll have heat stress and disease in the lawn at the same time. So the one thing to realize here is is you got to keep your wits about you, keep your head on straight, be a lawn detective, eliminate things that you can eliminate, understand what's going on around you, what do other lawns around you look like as opposed to yours, how are they cared for as opposed to yours, and then the number one thing you can do is reach out to your local county extension service. I I don't preach this enough, but they are there to help you. They are there to help answer questions that you will have about your lawn. And the thing about your local county extension agent is they will know what is happening in your, usually right in your neighborhood, because that's their job is to know what's going on. They help the professionals, but they also will help homeowners. So just Google search local county extension or county extension office near me. I'll put a listing below or a link to a listing below. Also, I'll try to pin that in a comment for you, because I really want you to get the right information before you go out and just sling in a bunch of camps, okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to say. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to look at today are two diseases that I'm seeing in cool season turf, and I'm going to take you through how they manifest and some of the differences, so hopefully you can eliminate whether this is a problem for you or not if you're seeing these brown spots. The first one that I'm seeing a lot of this year is Dollar Spot. Now, I have a video that I'll link below that I did on Dollar Spot a few years ago, been several years ago now, at my project lawn, as well as my friend Ben the Lawn Guardian, poor guy. He actually got really bad Dollar Spot in his lawn, and he is in the St. Louis area. So I'm seeing, though, tons of Dollar Spot all throughout that area, throughout the Midwest and the upper Midwest, and I'm also seeing a lot of Dollar Spot in the East and the Northeast. So Let's go through dollar spot because the thing about it is it's not necessarily serious and you can actually clear it up pretty quick. So the thing about dollar spot, it's going to start when you have, and I'm going to put some pictures up of things that I am about 90% sure are dollar spot. These are from the different groups and different pictures that people send me. I'll kind of flash those up as we go through. So dollar spot, nighttime temps over 55, daytime temps in the high 80s, pushing 90s does require extended periods where there's dew on the ground. So you're going to look for a period when you do have higher humidity that creates a dew point to where there is dew on the ground that kind of subsists through the nighttime and even into the late morning. Actual turf damage, you're going to notice it's going to be small silver dollar spots. And so that is why it's called dollar spot because it starts as literally little brownish orangish spots that are the size of a silver dollar. But what will happen is over time, they will expand to about the size of a baseball. And then as many of them end up appearing together, it looks like large spots, but it's not. It's just a bunch of small dollar spot that's kind of grown together. Now, the other thing you'll notice with dollar spot is when you look at the leaf blade, you can, not always, but in many cases, especially if you get to the margins. I've talked about this before. When you have a, a brown area in your lawn, look at the healthy part of your lawn and then look at the damaged part of your lawn. And what do you see as the difference when they're right next to each other? Well, right in between, right where the green meets the brown, if it's dollar spot, those grass blades will typically have hourglass shape lesions on them. So that's another way to tell that it's dollar spot. The other thing about dollar spot is it's the disease of the leaf. So therefore, the grass blades will still remain standing up. They won't flatten. They won't be uh, pressed down. They will still remain upright for the most part. Now, here's another thing. Dollar spot. 
primarily going to find it in Kentucky bluegrass. It will get into uh, perennial rye and, and, and turf type tall fescue here and there. Perennial rye it will. Turf type tall fescue not quite as much. So that's one of the keys to realize is if you have Kentucky bluegrass and or perennial rye and you see these spots, it's another clue that it's probably more leaning towards dollar spot, right? If you have turf type tall fescue, maybe not so much. It doesn't, it's not a hard and fast thing. It's not a black and white right or wrong. It's just another clue when you put all these other things together that I talked about here. You kind of put those together and you kind of realize. Now, the thing about dollar spot is once you get up into the higher 90s, mid higher 90s, which we are seeing, it will stop spreading. It will stop manifesting. There won't be new stuff coming out. However, what's there will still be there. It's not like those damaged scars just disappear when the temperatures get better. And that's one of the things I want to talk about real quick with dollar spot. And then we're going to move on to pythium. You can tell I'm trying to keep this fairly brief for you guys and get you the information you need. The thing about dollar spot is we used to say, and a lot of the university websites will say, this is one of those things that I've come to really change my opinion on here over the last few years working with so many homeowners. We used to say, well, you get dollar spot because your lawn is deficient in nitrogen, but I'm actually seeing it in lawns of you guys that bomb your lawns with nitrogen. And I've seen that for a couple of years and I just, it never clicked for me, but the conventional wisdom has always been that. But here's the deal. It probably is manifesting in your lawn in the spring, but you are bombing it with nitrogen. So it's just growing out. So you're not even seeing the damage. It's growing out like a bad hair job real quick. But the thing that happens when the temperatures get over 85 and 90, like what we're seeing, your grass stops growing. Even if it's full of nitrogen and packed deep, you're going to see that it stops growing. Those of you that even have still green lawns right now, which is a good majority of you, you're still not, you're not mowing every three days now. You're mowing every seven to nine or 10 days, even though your lawn is still green and packed with nitrogen. So it's not necessarily that your lawn is deficient in nitrogen. It's that your lawn has stopped growing and it's not able to grow the disease out. So therefore that bad hair dye job, or in this case, that dollar spot shows much longer and it doesn't grow out. So that's the challenge. It's that stress, that heat stress allows it to, to be seen, if that makes sense to you. So how do we get rid of it? Well, uh, in the past, I would have told you, just give it a shot of nitrogen. But see, right now, you can't do that. I do not recommend giving your lawn a heavy shot of nitrogen when it's 90, 95 degrees out like a lot of you are facing. So in this case, you will want to go ahead and use a fungicide. Unless you want to wait it out, it's fine. It doesn't cause long-term damage because it's a disease of the leaf. Once temperatures subside and the lawn starts growing vigorously again, it will grow out. But I know most of you that watch this channel aren't watching so that I'll tell you you can keep a, gr a brown lawn for the next six or nine weeks. <laughs> That's not why you watch. You want to try to fix that. So the number one way to stop and to help to cure up the problem of dollar spot is propiconazole. Now listen, azoxystrobin, which is Scott's Disease X, does not work on dollar spot. It does not work at all. So you want to use propiconazole for this. When I was working for Kimlon, we used Banner Max was the brand name. Now, propiconazole you can get generically now, but I would usually, when I had customers that weren't willing to wait it out, I would hit their lawn with Banner Max, propiconazole. You want to do this when it's under 85 because propiconazole, this fungicide, is a uh, growth retardant. And so, therefore, if you do it when it's hot, it can really cause some stunting and it can even burn the lawn slightly so spray this in the evening time and again there's not a high chance of that but you guys tend to be a little bit more heavy-handed and if I'm honest with you I tend to be a little bit more heavy-handed in the actual dollar spots I'm not telling you to do that but you wouldn't be the first so spray in the evening with that I'll give you a link below to some propiconazole that you can get on um, Amazon because I do recommend you use the 14.3 percent formulations in a concentrate a liquid concentrate and put those in a pump sprayer you're going to want to put that down now, and then you want to follow up again with that in 14 days. And then you had, and then that will pretty much stop the dollar spot from, from moving or getting any worse, as well as these higher temperatures, and if things dry out, will also help or remain dry if the humidity subsides. That will also help at the same time. And you should be cleared up inside of four weeks. Now, you should go ahead and give it some nitrogen, even if it's hot, this is one of those times, I'm not saying don't do nitrogen at all, just do really low dose nitrogen. If you want to do the Milo, get down a half a pound. So Milo is a 6% nitrogen product, so you'd put down about 9 pounds per thousand of the Milo. That's a nice slow release way to continue feeding the lawn so it can continue growing without pushing major growth. This is also assuming that your lawn has not gone into summer dormancy because for the most part, if your lawn has gone into summer dormancy, you're not going to notice the dollar spot anyway. So there are some things that I'm assuming here. 
If you have 818 X-Green, excellent because it has high potassium, which also helps a lawn recovering from disease stress. Last thing is if you do have some RGS, that's a great idea because that will help the lawn to grow without pushing unnatural growth with those cytokines in there, as well as if you happen to have some dethatch, that helps just because it's got molasses in it, so it just helps the microbes to eat up the dead stuff quicker. And obviously, dead grass can come from thatch, but dead grass can also come from disease spots. Okay, now let's move on to Pythium. Now, I don't have as much experience with Pythium, but I consulted with Matt Martin, who does. I did deal with Pythium in Dayton, Ohio. That would have been 2000, the year 2001. No, 2000. 2001, we had a really bad Pythium outbreak through good parts of Dayton, Ohio. A little bit different disease, though, and it looks a lot different, too. But once the disease manifests, they can look the same. Like I said, the dollar spot grows together and it looks like larger patches. And in that case, it can look like Pythium. But let me just give you some quick differences here. So Pythium will show up as spots. It's going to be when the when the nighttime temperatures are over 65. Day temperatures up into the near 90s is the same. That's when Pythium will show up. Now, you're going to mostly notice this on perennial ryegrass, not so much on Kentucky bluegrass. So there's a difference. I would have told you in the past that I didn't see it in fescues much, but Matt Martin, who has videos that I'll link below, does see it occasionally in the transition zone in turf-type tall fescue. Let me just say this real quick, too. I did consult with Matt because I wanted to make sure that I don't panic people, and I asked him, I'm said, I said, look, I'm seeing tons of dollar spot this year, a lot. Not, not any, I, don't have, I haven't seen anything that I've confirmed as Pythium, and I asked him because we're all both involved in the community here and we see a lot of things. And he told me he has seen a few confirmed cases of Pythian, but mostly dollar spot as well. So that's something to consider right there. Mostly what we're seeing across the country this year is dollar spot. Just another clue, another key to open another lock in your understanding is that most of what we're seeing this year is dollar spot. Now, the thing about Pythium, though, is if you do get it, they call it greasy spot because the, 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 the affected areas, by the way, both will have mycelium. Let me just say this. I forgot to say this. I should go back and say this. Dollar spot, when it first shows up, it'll look like spider webs on the lawn. Whereas pythium is more of a cottony mycelium look, even though I have seen dollar spot with cottony mycelium, but just wanted to throw that one out there too. If you see what you think are spider webs on your lawn, that's a, that's a clue that you're going to have probably some dollar spot. But I think we're past that phase here in July for most of you. Okay, back to it. The fact that the spots with the pythium are called grease spot is because this is a disease of the root and crown as well. It sits flat. When the spots die, they will flatten. They will lay flat and they will be greasy. We're still looking at high humidity. We're still looking at long periods of dew. That's all the same. But the, but the pythium spots will lay down flat because it's killing the whole plant. It also does cause long-term damage because of that. The other thing about pythium is it spreads really fast. Dollar spot will come on in sections and it'll kind of spread over a couple of weeks, whereas Pythium can spread in a matter of days, and it will follow water trails. If, you, if it rains, you'll notice that it follows the track of rain uh, and water flowing off of your property or where water goes because it the, the um, spores are taken through with the water, and then it's able to infect new areas. In this regard, it looks a lot like brown patch to me. In fact, I would say that the disease scarring, and I'm showing you some pictures here that I took from Matt Martin's video. Again, his videos are linked below on Pythium. You should definitely check those out if you think this might be something you have. But the manifestation of this looks a lot like brown patch to me. The difference is we are pretty much past brown patch for most of you across the country. So I do not think you're going to see brown patch or large patch as we call it in warm season turf at all anymore. We're kind of past that. So if you're seeing something that you think looks like brown patch that has just come on recently, that may be another clue that it's Pythium. So those are just a few different things to look at. And again, that big clue to me is, is that Pythium isn't found so much in Kentucky bluegrass. It's found more in the rye and then in the fescue, whereas the dollar spot is found in Kentucky bluegrass and rye and less in fescue. Now, this is another thing that I want to say. With Pythium, if you do want to treat it, the methanoxin is the... Number one fungicide to use is oxystrobin minimal, which is Scott's disease X. Propiconazole, I don't think will have any effect. But methanoxin is very expensive. So if you're going to treat, you got to think about that. By the time you ordered it and it got to you, the pythium would be even further expanded. I wonder if it wouldn't be a better idea if you did confirm, again, through your local county extension service that you do have pythium. If you just take on some good cultural practices, catch your clippings, 
Try to let the lawn dry out, maybe even stop watering. Do the best you can with it. Limp it along. And then in the fall, go ahead and mitigate with an aeration and overseed and do the number one thing that I've always said. I shouldn't say I've always said it, but I've recommended often is to not plant one single cultivar of grass in your lawn. Spread it out. Give yourself a mix of fescue, rye, and bluegrass. What I would call old school lawns. There's a reason why old school lawns don't necessarily get infected with these problems quite as often because they're mixes of several different varieties and cultivars that have been bred and and, uh, made better over the years. And then when you do choose a grass seed, choose one that would be more resistant to pythium if that's a problem you have. But this is one of those reasons why it's not good to to plant what they call a mono stand of one exact type of grass because if the disease attacks one grass but you've got three different types in there the others can kind of pick up where it left off that's kind of that idea and that's why i've recommended that and still do all right so there you go guys i hope this video has been helpful to you now one thing i want to say is don't panic none of this is that bad if anything just let it go slog your way through the summer aerate and overseed in the fall learn from your past experiences and move forward because as I mentioned in the podcast that I link below in the description, you're gonna live in this house 10, 20, 30 years. And all of these experiences that you have with your lawn are just gonna make you stronger in the future. So with that, hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn. By the way, what do you think about that zoysia grace right there, eh? Eh? She's a beaut.